Welcome to Garden Delights. I'm Susan Howington, Family Consumer Science Agent with the Henry County Cooperative Extension, partnership with the University of Georgia Cooperative Extension. Today we're going to be talking about corn. We're also here from Frank Hancock, our Agriculture and Natural Resource Agent, and he's going to be taking you out to Southern Bell Farm to tour just what's in season out there. So we'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Welcome back to Garden Delights. Today we're going to be talking about corn. And you know, corn is in season usually between June, July, sometime in August, maybe a little bit, but we're looking for what's in peak. And right now corn is there. And you know, the best place to look to sometimes is at your pick your owns. And we're going to talk more about that in just a little bit too. So corn is what a wonderful vegetable that we need to think about bite in season, but the nutrition part of it is just absolutely great. It's low in fat. It is also saturated sodium and cholesterol free. And you're going to get some wonderful fiber from that corn. And you're going to get a little bit of vitamin A and a vitamin C from it. Now about calorie wise, um, this is about a medium ear and I've already got this one shut ready to go. This is going to give you about 80 calories if you eat a whole corn of uh, the cob like this. So that's what you're looking for. And so that's really not too many calories. So as far as selection, you do want to look for corn that is green, not dried out. And if you're looking at the grocery store, once you buy it, you know, you need to really decide what you're going to do. But you're looking for something green, not dried out. You can feel the corn too when you're selecting it. You can go down through with your fingers. You can feel those kernels. You're also going to look for that moist, Silk right here, that's also going to be a helpful hint for you as far as that selection goes. So you want to look for that. You also, at the store, or if you're picking your own, if you have a chance, you can even open that corn and look down at that kernels just to make sure they are fully filled out. Not only that, but you don't see any decay or any kind of worms damage on that corn. So that's a good way, even at the grocery store, to check that corn out before you buy it. And some grocery stores will even let you shuck your corn if you wanted to, if you want to buy it that way too. So there's so many options out there. But selecting is what you want to look for. Now corn also will store in your refrigerator for about one to two days. So you need to decide once you pick it or buy it one to two days. And the reason why is corn does have natural sugar in it and it we want to slow that natural sugar down by either putting it in the refrigerator because we don't want it to go to starch. We want to prolong that starch. So if you can think about how you're going to put that corn together and what you're going to use it for, that's your key. So also corn freezes very well. So if you're deciding that you can't decide what you want to do in those one to two days, definitely freeze it. It freezes very well. It comes back out. It's very fresh tasting and you can't beat fresh corn. So just think about that when you're making those selections. Um, just to give you a helpful hint, about two ears of corn is going to make about a, a cup of corn if you're going to take it off the cob, which we'll be doing for the recipe. So as you can see, corn should be on your list, especially when it's in season. When we come back, we'll get a chance to hear Frank Hancock, and he's going to be telling you all about what's out at Southern Bell Farms. We'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Lights. Okay, today we're out here at Southern Bell Farm. Thought we'd just take a look around here. We got Jake Carter with us and uh, just uh, there's a lot of produce coming in right now. We're standing in, in one of the strawberry patches here. Uh, how many acres of strawberries you got out here, Jake? Frank, we got um, eight, right at eight acres of strawberries eight acres. on the farm. And, uh, and, and people are coming out here picking strawberries pretty much all day long. If you, if you glance up here towards the parking lot, you can see the parking lot's filling up and you can see uh, you know, people out here behind me that are already in the field picking. So uh, it'll be uh, it'll be an exciting day. The sun's out, so 
It's not too hot right now, so I think we'll get a pretty good crowd here in a little while. Tell us a little bit about the, about the strawberry business. Yeah, so um, we started growing strawberries about um, 10 or 11 years ago and um, have progressed into what we're doing today um, with the farm and agritourism. But strawberries are the first fruits of the season. They come in around, um, normally around early April, Frank, and uh, go to about right now. We're towards the very end of the season. Um, but the strawberries are still sweet right now and folks are enjoying coming out with their families and enjoying spending time together here at the uh -huh. farm and that's that's yep. primarily why we're here. Yep, all right. And uh, so we're gonna continue to tour around here. I mean, we've got in the background over here behind us, I see you got some muscadines over that's right. on the hill. That's right, those will be ready for the first time this year. Okay, so we've got muscadines. We're gonna look at some peaches here in a little while. Blackberries, I know the blackberries are coming in. They've yes, been sir. bringing some of them over to the farmer's market. Yeah. And uh, so let's just move around here. All right, and, sounds and great, let's go. Take a tour of yeah, the Yeah, love to show y'all around. All right. All right. See, so we got another family coming out here to pick strawberries. Now we've, we've moved around here to the peach orchard. It looks like a pretty good peach crop this season. Absolutely. And uh, some folks in here picking peaches as we speak. So uh, how many peach trees you got? Okay, so we have uh, right over 600 uh, trees, uh, 10 different varieties, and they ripen up all the way from end of May all the way to the middle of July. So, okay. Uh, we're into our second and third varieties right now. Okay, so that keeps people having something to pick right. right on through the all summer. All summer long. Yep. And it looks like the folks I see out here walking around and having a good time. They are, here. Frank. It's all about spending time together and yeah. enjoying some fresh fruit at the same time. That's right. Uh, so we had a little bit of a cool season to start off with this year. Uh, for extended period of time, but obviously it didn't bother the peaches too much. You know, I think that that's what helped with peaches. Uh, yeah. We had a, a, over a thousand chill hours, which yeah. is any any degree below 45, and uh -huh. that really put on a good fruit set for our trees. And uh, yeah. we we came close to some uh, dangerously low temperatures in the spring, but right. it didn't hurt us at all. And we're very very thankful and blessed that we have a crop this year. Okay. So we're going to continue our little tour here. Uh, but but there are lots of peaches out here, so anybody that doesn't have their peaches yet needs to come on out and and help pick some peaches. There you go. <laughs> um, so let's move around here now and look at uh, we got some blackberries right. and we'll some blueberries right. coming along. There you go. We we'll check them uh, out. We'll, let's go check those out. All right, sounds good. Let's go. Okay. Okay, now we've moved around here looking at the blackberries. You can see we got some pretty nice looking blackberries right here. But we're kind of right in the beginning of the blackberry season. So you see that there's lots of blackberries here that are going to ripen as time goes on, but there's plenty to pick today. Uh, how many blackberries we got out here? So Frank, we have about uh, right at three acres of blackberries. Okay. And um, there's uh, three different varieties. And the best part about them is they're thornless. Uh huh. I noticed that because I, I got in here close to this there one and go. didn't grab a hold of me. And thornless is the best kind that's of blackberries to have. Right. That's the best kind. So, uh, and I guess folks are starting to pick blackberries now. That's right. Our first variety is starting to ripen up now. Um, this weekend we should start picking variety number two. Yeah. And, um, okay. So we're excited about a, a long blackberry season this year. All right. Well, let's move on around here. Um, and uh, let's take a look at some blueberries. Sounds like a plan. All right, now we moved around here to some blueberries. We kind of struggled a little bit getting us a good stand of blueberries when we first started off, when Jake first started off. But then it turned out that he had to put a parking lot in 
where we were struggling with blueberries, so he, he just picked them up and moved them out here, and they took off. Not anything we did, but the, they like where they are now better than they did. That's right. Before. They, they certainly like the acidic uh, conditions that they're in now with the pine bark beds, and uh -huh. uh, the plants are really healthy. As you can see, we have a, a great looking crop of blueberries this year, Frank. Uh, and, uh, and they're just now coming in, so we hadn't quite started picking any blueberries that's yet. That's right. But, that's right. But there's going to be plenty of them when they start picking them. Yes, sir. Um, so how many blueberry plants we got? Uh, we have about three or 400 blueberry plants, Frank. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, uh, they're spaced out to hopefully last to the middle of July. So normally the first varieties come in around uh, end of May, around Memorial Day. And, um, you know, as you can see, they're in all different stages here on the plant. So yep. all right. look that's, for all the good long season. Good. I've seen a lot of people out here picking blueberries. Yes, in sir. The, in the past years, they just... Yes, they go at it. A yes, little, little bit harder to harvest blueberries than it is blackberries well, you're and right. peaches. But um, labor of love. That's right. So, but, but they're healthy. They're good yes. for you. Yeah. So, we've got the tour here. Uh, I see more blackberries here on the other side of the blueberries, and so uh, Southern Bell has pretty much filled up this acreage with things for people to come out here and enjoy it with their family and come out and pick some fresh fruit. Uh, so we've seen the, the strawberries, the peaches, the blackberries, the blueberries. And if you don't want to get out in the hot sun to pick anything, they got a general store up here. You can go in there and get some somebody else has already picked for you. Yes, sir. Look forward to having y'all out at the farm. Come see us. We appreciate you letting us come out today, Jake. All right. Enjoy I think, it. I think what we're going to do now is go see what Susan's fixing in the kitchen. There you go. Welcome back to Garden Delights. I know you saw a lot of good things out at Southern Bell Farm, so go pick whatever you like, whether it's those blueberries, blackberries, peaches, or strawberries. So today we're gonna to talk about corn, and we're going to be making a fresh grilled corn salad. And it's so easy, so tasty. Um, so let's get started. So let's say that I've already have a lot of corn cut off in this bowl and I did grill this corn and it takes about, like I said earlier, about two ears of corn to make a cup. And so I like to just, you know, it's up to you and I have this cutting board, but I just like to cut it, you know, however you want to do it, but you just cut it off however you want to do it. This is going to make where I have to split it up a little bit, but you just cut the kernels off just like this. And this has already been cooked. It's been on the grill. And I like cooking it on the grill because it makes it really, really tasty. I did put this corn in the refrigerator for a little while, so it would not be hot when I'm cutting it. And you can see some marks of that grill also on it. I'm gonna make sure I get every bit of that corn off. So what I'm gonna do is use this cutting board to put my corn on. So what I do is I can just take, you can just take your fingers, just make sure you kind of split it up because you do want your kernels loosely, not in rows like that. And so once you cut them up, get them loosely out like this, and they tend to do better if they're a little cool too because when they're hot, they're gonna stick even worse together. So you just kind of split them up. And what we're looking for for the recipe is about four cups of corn. So that's the reason why I said about two ears is gonna make a cup. And of course you can, if you wanna double the recipe, you can, that means you gotta have more corn. So it's up to you. So I'm just gonna split this out a little bit. And once I store it all up, it'll kind of divide it out. But I just wanna make sure I get that loosely done. So you have your corn, and then we're gonna add some other really tasty ingredients into that corn. So I'm gonna use me a paper towel real quick. Just to dry my hands off. Okay, so for this recipe, you're gonna need about two cups of cherry tomatoes. And I've already cut the cherry tomatoes in halves. If you want to, you can also quarter those cherry tomatoes. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put those in the corn. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to also have about half of a red onion. So I'm gonna, and it's diced pretty thin, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. And then you're gonna need about, and I used an orange bell pepper, and it's gonna tell you about a half of a bell pepper. And I like the green, but sometimes I like it better cooked than raw. So I've chose to use a yellow one. This is kind of a yellow orange. 
Now, my corn, I don't know if you notice, is white corn. And if you use yellow corn, I was trying to make a contrast with my color. So that's the reason why I chose the orange bell pepper. So you're going to also put that in there. And then you're going to need about a third of a cup of feta cheese. So this is about a third of a cup. You're going to add that. And what I want to do real quick is I want to stir this around just a little bit because we're also going to add a little bit of liquid to it. And next thing I'm going to add, and this is about a tablespoon of basil. And to me, um, when corn is in season, also the basil's in season. So this is about a tablespoon of chopped up uh, basil. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle this in now that I have that a little bit tossed. And it smells really, really good. If you can get some fresh basil, chop it up. It's just really, it's just going to add to the salad. So I'm going to mix this around just a little bit more. And once I have that kind of mixed in with that basil, and I just lost a piece of kernel, I'm going to have to add back to my bowl. All right, so we have this. So then it's going to tell you, and I'm going to mix this all together, and you don't have to, but I am just to kind of show you how easy it is, then you can kind of pour it on top. So what you're going to need for the little dressing part is this is three tablespoons of olive oil. I also have one uh, teaspoon of sugar, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. So I'm going to add that into the olive oil. I'm just going to keep stacking here. And then I also have one lime juice. So you're going to squeeze one lime juice. I'm going to add it also to the liquid part. So I want to put that all together. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this other spoon and I'm just going to kind of mix this in because really what I want to do is make sure this kind of gets around all the corn salad and it just makes it really, really tasty. And so I want to make sure, and just that lemon juice and oil mixing together really, really helps thicken it up. And it's also going to have that acidity to it that keeps everything fresh too. So that's a good thing about adding a little bit of juice to it, lemon juice or lime juice. Um, just to get that little taste to it. So what I'm going to do is just kind of work it around the salad. I'm just going to kind of pour it, but I do want to make sure I get it all out of there as much as possible because it does help the taste. Of course, if you don't want to put this on there, you don't have to. I mean, you can eat it just like it is, but to me, it just gives a wonderful flavor. And if you could smell it right now, you would know what I mean. Between that basil and the corn and everything else, it just smells so good and it's so nice looking. I mean, you're using, you think about, we've got corn in season, we've got basil in season, and we also have those tomatoes in season. So what a great way to put a corn salad together. And then who doesn't like to grill? So just an easy way not to heat up your house, but to grill that corn outside. So this is what we call fresh corn grilled salad. Doesn't that look wonderful? So we'll see you back in just a little bit and we'll be tasting this. See you back in just a little bit on Garden of Lights. Welcome back to Garden of Lights. Frank, we have a fresh grilled corn salad. It looks good. It, it is going to be good. I like corn. I do too. And what can you do with corn but cook it on the grill? I'll give you a little bit of tomatoes too. That's good. It's really good. Refreshing. It's cool. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I love fresh corn in the summer. We've been out to farm today, riding around looking at strawberries and peaches and blackberries and blueberries. Quite an assortment out there. I know it, and I wish I could have gone with you, but I always have a chance to go back. Folks can go out there and, and pick it themselves, or they can go up to the store and buy it already picked. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Well, I'm going to have to have one more bite. Mmm. That corn is good. Mmm. Check out the website for the recipe. I know you're going to really like it. It's so easy and tasty.
and Frank and I will see you next time on Garden Delights. I recommend it.